You're a rebel, an insurgent, and a vowed freedom fighter. And things are looking pretty bad. For months you've struggled against the repressive forces of the dictator. And although you and your resistance have made the dictator quake in his boots, you're beginning to realize you were too successful for your own good. The Americans are on their way to restore order, and unlike the dictator, their satellites know just where your mountain bases are located. Now the sound of aircraft is growing louder in the distance, and you have no choice but to run. As you flee, you wonder which warplane is going to be the death of you. Perhaps a fighter jet so advanced that radar would deny it's there even after it's dropped a bomb on your head, or perhaps it's a bomber that flew thousands of miles just to unleash its payload. The plane is closer, it's too close, and knowing your fate is sealed, you turn around to lay eyes upon the pilot that will kill you. Except no wait, it's a crop duster with f***ing missiles. Today, the story of the AT-802 Air Tractor, its evolution into the AT-802U Skywarden, and its adoption into some of the most dangerous and effective special operations squads in the world. Now, we'll be getting to the military stuff in due time, promise you that, but first it's important to dig into why and how this unconventional warbird took to the skies at all. The AT-802 was first conceived in 1989 as the brainchild of an aeronautical engineer named Leland Snow. Founder of a company known as Air Tractor, Snow was a leading designer in agricultural aircraft, that is, well, crop dusters and other aircraft that can assist with large-scale farming operations. He was very good at what he did, and he already had a successful line of agricultural planes to his name, the Snow S2 series of which just over 400 were produced. But as Snow had long since figured out, building planes for farmers was a notoriously fickle business. If the farmers had an above average crop yield one year, they might have the money to splurge on a crop duster, but if the harvest was poor, Snow would be lucky to make a single sale. So, like any good businessman, Leland Snow started looking for ways to diversify, and he got it in his head that he wanted to create a plane that could handle the work of large-scale agriculture, but also fulfill other roles where Snow could serve a more steady market demand. Since low-flying, payload-heavy, nimble agricultural planes fulfill a lot of the same roles as firefighting planes, Snow began working on a design that could do both jobs. After all, back in his day, forest fires were a lot more consistent than crop yields. First, he set to work making a plane that could handle dedicated firefighting operations. That way, even if the plane turned out to be hard to adapt to agriculture, at least Air Tractor would have diversified its offerings. Today, I want to talk to you about something that's becoming a bit of a necessity in our digital world, having a VPN. And luckily for you, I've got the perfect solution for all of your internet needs. Introducing today's sponsor, Surfshark. I mean, picture this, you're scrolling the web trying to protect your privacy, but every turn you take it seems to mess up your plans. Well, Surfshark is there to solve that problem. It's like having a superhero protecting you in your internet adventures. And the best part, it's incredibly easy to use. Just a few taps on your device or clicks on your computer and you're good to go. You're instantly protected. It's as easy as putting on your favorite pair of pants before heading outside and honestly, probably just as important. Now let's talk about Surfshark perks. With Surfshark, you can travel the world in just one click, connect to different servers and unlock a whole different world of content. Say goodbye to FOMO and hello to unlimited entertainment, but it's not just about streaming. Surfshark lets you access blocked websites and even get the best deals when online shopping. No more location-based pricing tricks. And let's not forget about staying safe on public Wi-Fi. Whether you're a cafe go or a globe trotter, Surfshark encrypts your data, keeping you secure wherever you go. Say goodbye to those pesky hackers. And here's the icing on the cake. Surfshark offers an add-on security combo. With Surfshark Alert, Antivirus, and Search, you can monitor your personal data, keep your device virus-free, and browse without leaving a trace. It's like having a team of internet bodyguards. So, how can you get your hands on Surfshark and enjoy all these amazing features? It's simple. Just go to surfshark.deals forward slash mega and use the promo code mega to get a whopping 83% off plus three months for free. It's a deal you don't want to miss. And now back to today's video. He was joined on the project by a young engineer named Victor Trotter, plus a group of firefighting professionals, all of whom collaborated to produce a workable design. The plane they created was a two-seater, turboprop plane, visually somewhat similar to any other single-engine propeller plane, but with low-positioned wings and a long, narrow fuselage to keep it aerodynamic. The plane was capable of carrying 800 gallons of payload, with the ruggedness to operate in remote airstrips and an easy-to-maintain airframe. After it was picked up by the firefighting industry, the 8802 was adapted to agriculture, where an 800-gallon payload was around double the industry standard on a crop duster, leading to questions on whether or not the plane would actually 
get any use. While the AT-802 was a hit with firefighters, there simply weren't that many firefighting planes in the world, and only about 150 of the planes have been built so far. In order to make it more appealing to agricultural customers, Snow and his team made a single-seater version, hooked it up to some spraying tools, and put it on the market. The effort worked, and Snow was pleasantly surprised when his plane became a hit among the heavy-duty farming community for its speed, efficiency, and above all, its payload. Before long, the AT-802's nimbleness, its ease to produce in large numbers, its power in the sky, and its support from a number of civil leaders around the world led it to be adopted globally as a firefighting aircraft. In fact, it led firefighters to develop a new strategy of actually dealing with wildfires, the so-called initial attack strategy, where a bunch of fast-moving, quick-takeoff AT-802s can swarm the site of a new wildfire before it grows too big to simply put out. In a world that had previously been forced to work with land-based firefighters traveling in trucks and heavier tanker planes that couldn't get into the sky fast enough, the AT-802 really was a game-changer. Eventually, the planes would find work containing oil spills in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, hauling fuel to remote mining towns, and assisting with counter-narcotics operations with the United States Border Patrol. <laughs> But it wasn't until that last assignment for the AT-802, flying over America's southern border and rooting out narcotic cash crops, that Leland Snow started to realize another potential use for his air tractor. Because it had been deployed over cartel-run areas where it might occasionally be shot at, Border Patrol's AT-802s had gotten a series of special modifications. Self-sealing fuel tanks, armor around the engine and the cockpit, and better avionics technology. But these modifications were also starting to make the AT-802 look more and more like a military aircraft. And luckily for Snow, the United States Air Force had just announced a competition that could become Air Tractor's golden opportunity. The Air Force was looking for a light attack slash armed reconnaissance aircraft, one that was capable of tracking down and attacking enemy targets in one of a few ways. The aircraft they were looking for would be able to operate on its own, fly long missions, gathering intelligence, mount small scale attacks all by itself, or assist ground troops, especially in small unit environments where something like the A 10 Warthog would seem just a little bit of overkill. After all, the US military is definitely known for avoiding overkill. God bless America. In response to the Air Force's request, Snow put together a version of the plane that was dubbed the AT-802U, better known as the Sky Warden. In addition to all of those prior upgrades that Border Patrol's version included, it received structural updates to its airframe, bulletproof windscreens, and modifications to make it easily disassembled, stuffed into a C-17 cargo plane, and put back together in the space of a day once it arrives in a hot zone. The cockpit was also built into a steel frame designed to act as a roll cage, which can support the entire weight of the aircraft and protect the pilot if they were to be shot down and flip over on the ground. The plane features a multi-channel data link that can be used to send ground commanders a real-time view of the battlefield, and the cockpit is compatible with night vision. Well, it's about time that we please our more hardcore aviation nerd viewers with a few of the specs. A two-seater plane powered by a Pratt & Whitney PT-6A67F engine, the Sky Warden is 37 and a half feet long with a wingspan of about 59 feet. Without any weapons attached, the plane is just under four tons, although it's able to take off and land at a gross weight of 8 tons, 16,000 pounds. Unarmed, it's got a maximum speed of 245 miles per hour with a patrol speed of 207 miles per hour and a stall speed, which in practical purposes is about the slowest it can go while continually strafing a ground target of about 105 miles an hour. It's got a range of about 1,300 miles, which at its patrol speed makes it able to fly for over half a day. However, it only requires a runway of about 1,200 feet to land and take off, less than a quarter mile, making it ideal to work out makeshift airstrips cut into the jungle or the highlands in the middle of nowhere. The plane has up to 15 hardpoints, which can load anything from 50 caliber Gatling guns to Hellfire missiles to rocket launchers to laser-guided bombs, making the plane incredibly versatile in the field while also making it one of the weirdest mergers of high-tech and low-tech that you're ever likely to find in the skies today. But all of those specs, even when combined, still miss some of the aircraft's intangibles. In a practical sense, the Sky Warden has over half the payload capacity and just as many weapons hardpoints as the very expensive and very hard to maintain A-10 Warthog while being easier to deploy and maintain in the field. And although it's slower, that slowness isn't necessarily a bad thing for a plane that's built to attack stationary ground targets. It doesn't really 
have that American badass feel to it, but it does its job really, really well. It's more than capable of flying sustained missions, taking into account refueling and pilot switching for up to 500 hours at a time with an airframe that could be quickly and easily maintained with tools that could fit in a toolbox. And while the A-10 costs over $22,000 to fly for an hour, the Skywarden costs just a few hundred per hour, and hypothetically, a single combat mechanic should be able to keep the Skywarden airworthy as long as a couple of their buddies are willing to hold some things in place while they change out the weapon attachments. The Air Force was more than willing to take a chance on Skywardens and see how they held up in the field. As of 2017, Air Tractor produced 28 of the combat-ready 802Us, which were mostly deployed to the Middle East to assist with counterinsurgency operations. Although it's hard to say precisely where the AT-802U showed up on the battlefield, we can assume that the Skywarden may have battled ISIS in Iraq and Syria, assisted the Afghan military in fighting the Taliban prior to the US withdrawal, and probably it's been deployed to more than a few other minor hot Zones. So far as we can tell, not a single Skywarden has been shot down either. Can you put in a request for a few of the planes to fight Al Shabaab militants, although that deal was not fully completed? And a competitor company, Iomax, even marketed their own wartime crop dust at the Archangel to countries in the Middle East. With the wind down of foreign combat operations in the Middle East and the withdrawal from Afghanistan, it seemed as if the United States Air Force might start saying goodbye to the Sky Warden around the start of the 2020s. However, the plane appears to have been a big enough success for the Air Force that it's not yet time to let go. In 2022, U.S. Special Operations Command announced that the Sky Warden had won a contract for its so-called Armed Overwatch program, beating out five competitor designs in order to do so. With an initial contract for 75 aircraft, Special Operations Command plans to award Air Tractor and their partner company L3 Harris an initial sum of $170 million with the potential to spend up to $3 billion producing more and more aircraft if the first round of 75 are a hit. SOCOM's request was for a deployable, sustainable, single-engine, fixed-wing, crude, and affordable aircraft system. It will provide close air support, precision strike, armed intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance (ISR), strike coordination, and forward air controller requirements for use in austere and permissive environments. Translating that from uh, military to English, SOCOM wanted a durable, cheap plane that could operate in hostile environments, helping special operations soldiers win firefights on the grounds or traveling far afield on its own in order to spy on or attack hostile targets. SOCOM has been searching for a plane like this since 2009, and it's failed more than once in the process. Not only is Skywarden an ideal tool for the job, but it's important to emphasize just how different this particular mission is from what most of the United States air power is designed to do. Drones don't work on this level of combat, at least not yet. Special operators needed a plane that could keep up in the difficult locations where they were headed while keeping versatile enough and being easy enough to maintain that it wouldn't become a liability. In that sort of mission, where, say, a couple of dozen special forces troops are spending months helping a foreign insurgency in a third world country, having a well-armed plane or two that those operators can basically use and maintain themselves is a massive advantage. And according to Air Tractor, that's exactly what the Skywalker and planes are going to do in the future. They're going to be distributed to small units on the ground and perform just about any mission role that those units could ask of it. Although any updates that Air Tractor or SOCOM plan to make are currently unknown, it seems more than reasonable to assume that the equipment inside the Skywarden is probably going to get a technology update for the 2020s. And with a deadline for our initial operation in 2026, we may learn more information about other updates fairly soon. Ironically, the Lieutenant General in charge of the Air Force's Special Operations Division, Jim Slife, has pointed pointed out that modern Air Force pilots are basically unequipped to fly a prop plane and have no real experience doing so. But if they can fly an F-35, we're fairly optimistic that they can pick up the Skywarden pretty quickly. According to SOCOM Commander General Richard Clark, the first 75 Skywardens will probably be broken into five squadrons of 15 planes each. One squadron to be deployed at a given time, three squadrons to train and receive maintenance, and one squadron to train new pilots on the Skywarden. But while that's all well and good, the Skywarden's track record thus far suggests that it might not actually need the sort of maintenance that would put three full squadrons, 60% of all available planes, basically onto the sidelines at a given time. After initial exploratory phases, the Skywarden's capability and proven record of service point to a plane that may well be deployed en masse in ones, twos, and threes to hot zones around the world on a moment's notice. When it gets there, it'll be combined with high-tech, easy-to-move weapons like BAE Systems' Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System, which allows pilots to assemble precision-guided rocket pods in the field and easily mount them to a plane. All in all, the AT-802's unlikely journey from crop duster to special operations plane, well, in hindsight, 
it actually makes quite a bit of sense. Such a rugged, easily maintained plane is a massive advantage in a whole range of operations, but especially in military settings, where it's in many ways a perfect, low-tech solution for an air force that badly wants to be the most technologically advanced military branch out there. The Skywarden isn't stealthy, it isn't fast, and it isn't about to win a dogfight with China's J-20 fighters. But it's incredibly versatile, it's able to pack on a whole lot of hardware, and it can deploy where the most advanced modern fighter jets have no hope of even taking off. For Air Tractor, for the Skywarden, and for US Special Operations Command, it seems fairly clear that this strange union is only just getting started. And once the Skywarden does begin popping up in hot zones around the world, there's no telling what impact it might ultimately have.